name is Hiba Omar. I'm Data Innovation Coordinator and Research Associate at LISI. In this video, I'll be showing you how to get started working with the LISI system. And this will include what is the LISI system, what resources to check to start working with the LISI system, how to recall datasets in LISI, how to run simple descriptive statistics in LISI, merging and appending list data files, and some limitations and ways out. So, to start with introducing LISI, LISI is a remote execution system that allows researchers to access from remote locations the LIS and those microdata, while respecting the privacy restrictions required by the countries that provide LIS with the data. So it provides secure access to the microdata through a web-based job submission interface. So what do we exactly mean by respecting the privacy restrictions required by the countries providing the data? This means that there are certain commands that we cannot run in LIS. So you cannot browse the data in LISI or you cannot download the data. Once you are connected to LISI through the web-based interface with your username and password received during the registration process, you will be able to write and submit your statistical request in four different statistical packages that LISI supports, which are R, SAS, SPSS, and STATA. You can track the status of the job you have sent and view the job request and the resulting listing and you can manage all the job requested you have ever sent. In this regard, I would like to mention that in order to, to know how to register to LISI, please check our other video on registering to LISI if you are not already registered. So let's go online to check how to use the LISI interface. From our website, there are certain resources that you will help you a lot to start working with LISI. You go to resources, get started with LISI. The first thing that can help you to get started with LISI is our self-teaching material. These materials are available in four different statistical softwares that LISI supports, R, SAS, SPSS, and STATA. These packages are designed to help you to get acquainted with the programming syntax that you might want to apply to while working on microdata. So we have two kinds of exercises. The first exercise will lead you through uh, the process of developing a comparative research project that examines inequality and poverty across countries, while the second part emphasizes the usage of the person-level data in research. The second resource is the sample files. Since LISI does not allow researchers working with the LIS database to view or download the microdata to comply with the privacy agreements with the data providers, LIS has provided sample artificial data files to enable researchers to debug and check the syntax before submitting them to LISI. Please note that these sample files are for training purposes only, and no results can be drawn upon using them. Here we provide the sample files for both LIS and LUS database in four different statistical packages. Another important thing you have to consider before submitting jobs or working in LISI is a job submission web page where we give you lots of information on how to submit jobs in LISI. So in this part, we introduce you to the dataset analysis. So instead of using file names, we use a shortened analysis for each of the list and loose and ERF list databases. So it's a concatenation of the two digits ISO country code and the last two digits of the dataset reference year. In addition to a letter code that is identifies the type of the dataset, whether it's a household file or a person file, and in the case of loose, there is also the R file. Since you have to use a specific syntax that we have developed in order to define the path from which the file is recalled. For example, if you are using a stata file, you have to place the dollar sign character before the allies. So as we have said, if we are using LU4 household file or LU10 household file, we will place a dollar sign before the allies itself. We will show in details when we go to work in LISI. Additionally, we show you how to produce graphs by different statistical package. Since it's a newly upgraded version of LISI, the users are now enabled to view on screen the graphs that are produced. So you use the typical coding for the graphs that you usually use in any statistical package of the four. And then you add a certain syntax that allows you to view this graph on the LISI interface and download it in PNG format. So, for example, for the case of this data, you have to add this line at the end of the code in order to view the graph in LISI interface. Very important thing that you should know about LISI is that we provide two different kinds of files. The first file is the list of list and lose datasets, where you can see all the datasets that are available in list and lose datasets, and so as the ERF database. In addition to this, we provide a separate file on the PPPs deflators. And in this regard, I highly encourage you to check other videos on the PBPs deflators by our colleague Gintare. 
to see how to best use the less PPPs deflators to produce comparative measures across countries and across states. Please continue watching part two of this tutorial in order to get more information on how to work on LISI practically. Thank you.